Hi guys, I'm Greg from ZE Partner, and today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks uh, for how to get the most out of my client portal extension for Zoho CRM called ZE Portal. If you haven't tried it already, check out our free trial, no credit card required. You can install it yourself, and in a matter of minutes, you can start creating client portals for your clients. It really is a phenomenal app. I've been getting some incredible feedback from my existing subscribers telling me how much their clients love it and how much they love it and how much time it's saving them. So it really would be worth checking out if you have to collect any documents or data from your clients. You can do so much with it. It's very customizable. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some of the automations and customization you can put in place, including creating a client portal from a workflow rule and creating a client portal from a blueprint transition. And then we'll be doing the same from a blueprint transition, we'll be adding a additional client portal item. And from a workflow rule, we'll be adding an additional client portal item. So let's get on with the video. So here I am inside CRM. Just to confirm, before you um, start doing anything with the extension, you should visit the marketplace all under setup and then go to your installed extensions, go to the ZE portal settings, and then make sure you can see this green box here that says the portal is successfully set up. If it's not, make sure you've set your data center and that you set up your OAuth connection. Those are the two main things you need to do. Also, if you have multiple Zoho Books organizations, make sure that you've set the correct ID here. So if you go to Zoho Books, you can look here what your org ID is for your main organization, and then just make sure you've selected it here. If this is not the right one, click Unset Zoho Books ID, select the correct one, and then click Update Settings. Some people have multiple Zoho Books accounts because they signed up for a free trial or they started Zoho Books before they got Zoho One. Anyway, on with today's video. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can create a workflow rule that will start a client portal. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my blueprint because I don't want to be within a blueprint when this happens. Be careful, obviously, if you have a blueprint going, if you switch that off, then all your records will leave the blueprint if you follow exactly what I just did. So now if we go to a deal, let's just look what our next stage is. So I've already got a client portal for them. So let's choose this one here. Okay. So this is currently in a waiting client portal, but I can see there are no client portals for this one. So that's good. We're going to put these guys in qualification. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a workflow rule that says when the stage changes to a waiting client portal, create the client portal. So we'll just go to workflow rules. We'll go create rule. We'll set this to run on the deals module. But remember, if you work with your contacts or your leads or your vendors, you can you can run a client portal on them as well. So here we're going to say create, let's actually start this with the portal, create client portal on stage change. Okay, next. And now we'll say based on a record action, based on edit, repeat this workflow when the deal is edited. Now, you probably wouldn't want to set this. I'm going to leave this ticked for my testing purposes now, but what you don't want to do is every time you go back to the stage, you don't want to create a new client portal for this person. But there's another way around that, and I'll show you that in a minute as well. So we'll say a specific field gets changed, and we want the stage is changed to the value awaiting client portal. Next. Now what we'll do is we'll put a condition in here. We'll say if the most recent client portal hash is empty. And then that will mean that if there's an existing client portal, we won't run this rule. So now what we'll do is we'll go down here to custom actions. And this is really cool. Like this took a long time for me to make, but it really is worthwhile. So here you click create client portal. And without writing any code, you're able to set which template you want to show. So in this case, we're working with the deals module. So we'll do deal preparation portal for two guests. And we will select the person, which will be our contact name. That's the person we want to run it for. And we'll click Save. And we'll just name this Two Guests Client Portal. Save and Associate. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll add another condition. And we'll say for all the other deals. So in other words, if there is already a hash in there, 
Then what we want to do is we want to add a client portal item. So here we will say deals that do not match any of the above conditions. Okay. And we'll say custom action, add portal item. And here we'll call this item, whatever we want. So let's just call this updated bank statements because those change quite regularly. We'll set them as requested. It's a document. And here we'll say, please upload your most recent bank statements covering at least the past three months. And remember, we can add images here. We can make this look pretty, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm not going to bother. So I'm just going to say add portal item. And this is additional bank statements. Now I've actually helped one of my subscribers who's a mortgage broker and we've set up some buttons for him so that he's just got tick boxes on his deals. And when he ticks that button, then it adds a specific item to his client portal request. So as he's working with his clients and he might be talking on the phone to them, or he might receive an email from them or from one of the lenders and they say, oh, we need X. Then he just ticks the box that relates to X and automatically that item is added to the client's client portal. It's a really amazing what you can do with this. All right, so we're gonna click save here. And now let's go test it out. That's literally how simple it was. So let's reload this and let's just check because I've been using the system for testing. So let's just check that there isn't a hash in there. Okay, good, so it is empty. So now if we go to a waiting client portal and give it just a moment for the workflow rule to run, this will turn yellow, there we go. So we'll go reload. And now we can see portals, we have a portal. Now, if you look here, this still shows that we don't have a portal, but that's just because it takes about 20 seconds for that to wake up. So if we refresh it again, no, okay. It, it will wake up eventually, but it, as I say, it takes about 20 seconds. I don't wanna waste your time. Okay, so now if we go to this portal and we view which items this portal has, it has the travel preferences form, it has the travel documents for, and then the second person, but there's no second person on this deal, but normally it would have the second person's name there. And then we have the uh, travel documents for the main person. Okay, so if we go back to our deal and reload, we can now see that our portal has woken up and can see that the portal is here. I've changed the buttons recently, so I hope you like the change. Um, I think it looks much more modern and sleek but you let me know what you think. All right, so now that we've got our portal, let's come out of this, go back to qualification, and now let's go to awaiting client portal again. And now if you remember, this rule should now trigger to add the additional item. So we wait for it to run, there it's just run, so let's reload this. And then if we look at our items, we can now see that we have the updated bank statements. And if we close out of here and we open the portal as the client, we can see here that all four of those documents are requested here. Please upload your most recent bank statements covering the last, at least the past three months. I mean, it could not be easier, guys. And it's what are we? We're eight minutes into my screen recording. I've probably redone a couple of segments where I've said the wrong thing and reset it. So in under eight minutes, including my explanation about your setup and everything like that, I've managed to set that up. So you could definitely do this on your own within 10 minutes following along on this video. It's incredibly customizable and incredibly simple. Okay, so let's turn that workflow rule off because I don't want that to cause us problems later. We'll just switch that one off, deactivate. So now let's look at how we do this through a blueprint. Now it's a bit more complicated through a blueprint because we need some code. I can't write those um, cool pop-ups that you saw for the workflow rule when it comes to code. Now I've already got a section of code here that I've written. And if we look on the blueprint, I can't obviously teach you all about blueprints in this video because that will go on forever. But I do have other videos about how blueprints work, how transitions work and how to add custom actions. But a custom action is basically just a script that runs. And then if we open up the script, we can see here that we have this code, okay? And this code is very simple. I've already created a function that, you, that you're using here. So you're using this create portal template from API function. And all you're really doing is putting in the data 
for the template ID, the deal ID, and the portal person ID. Now, if we go to zeportal.net and we go to the support section and we go to subscriber support, how to guides, we can see here that we've got how to guides on how to do everything. I think I'm actually in the wrong place. I think it's under customization. So here it is, create portal script. And there's one for the deal. And then there's one for contacts, leads, or vendors, because you need slightly different information for each one. Um, but you'll see here, most of this is notes. These, these two slashes mean that the computer ignores that information after the two slashes. So that's just me giving you guys guidance on what to write you know, in these sections here. So you basically want to write between the two hashes, and you want to put the information in there as to what's required. But it really couldn't be simpler. So here we've got our function that creates our client portal template. In this case, we have to hard code the template ID. And the way we do that is we just go to our portal templates module. And here are all of our different portal templates. We click into the one that we're interested in. So for example, the one we were using for our workflow rule is here. And then we copy the ID from the URL bar at the top here. And then we just paste that in there. All right. And the rest is all very self-explanatory. You can copy and paste it and just basically put in the information as you see it. And this will now create our client portal. So the next thing we're going to do is let's add a button on here that says request bank statements. OK. And let's go after custom actions. And here we'll go new function, write function, the portal request bank statements. OK, create. So now if we go back to our support section and we go back to customization, we'll go to the create additional portal item. And we're basically just going to copy all this code across and go through it step by step together. So we'll paste that in there. So the first thing we need is we need our portal record ID. So where do we get that from? Well, we have to get that from our deal. So if we go to deal ID here, and here we want to say deal ID, deals ID, done, save. All right. So if we go up to the top and we write deal record equals zoho.crm.getRecordById, deals, deal ID, and now we want to get our portal. So there's two ways we can get our portal. The first way is we can look at our related list of portals that are linked to our deal, or we can look up the hash for the latest portal on our deal. And that's the way we're going to do it. So if we go into settings and APIs, and then API names and deals, and we're going to search here for hash, and we're going to copy this here. All right, and we're going to paste that there and say equals deal record dot get JSON and there. OK, so now what we want to do is we need to find the record that matches that hash. So we'll go matching portals list equals. And here we go, Zoho dot CRM dot search records. So here we want to look up Zep portals one and paste that in there. And then inside our portals, we need to find what the hash is called. So there it is, zep underscore underscore portal hash. So we'll say where the zep underscore portal portal hash colon equals colon. And then we'll put in here our zep most recent portal record hash. And now we want to say plus close out our brackets and go there. So now we'll say for each portal in our matching portals list, portal ID equals portal.getjson ID. And what else do we need? I think that's all we need, yeah. So now we'll copy all of this code and we'll put this up here. And so let's just take that and put that there. And then we can get rid of this. And now we want our item name. So this will be latest bank statements. Item type will be document. And our 
guidance will be please upload your latest three months bank statements. All right, and that is it. So now we go save and republish, save anyway. Our blueprint is switched back on, which is good. So now let's just delete the portal. Actually, no, let's go to a different deal. And let me put this back into a blueprint. Let's just go there. So we'll say send quote. We'll say quotes accepted, payment received, and now we're awaiting our client portal. So this should now create a client portal. There we go, we've got our portal. And now what we can do is if we check here, our hash is filled in, great. So now what we can do is we can say request bank statements. And then if we look at the portal items, oh, we might need to refresh. There we go, latest bank statements. Now I don't recommend having this button here like this where it's a repeat transition. I just did that for simplicity sakes. I didn't have to edit my blueprint, but obviously you don't want people to be able to click this over and over again, because it'll just keep adding the same item over and over again. But it's just to show you the gist of how easy it is to set blueprints to automatically create portals and create items and how easy it is to create workflow rules that create portals and create items. One of my favorite ways to use the workflow rules to create items is when you have a Zoho form that the client fills in as part of the portal and then a particular response they give you back informs you that you may need a, an additional document. So for example, if the client fills in on the form that they're self-employed, then you might want to add the additional document automatically via a workflow rule asking for their tax information. So you can really speed up the process of onboarding customers where you don't even need to look at the record. You can let the customer fill in things and then have that inform the system and have the system then add additional items for the customer to then provide. So it's a very hands-off approach. It automates the whole process and it chases your customers for you. So it really is super powerful. To find out more or to set up a free trial, just visit zeportal.net. Come on down here and click start free trial today. There's no credit card required. Just fill in your information, get your org ID, which you just copy from here, including the word org and paste it in there. Fill in the rest of the information click start your free trial and you're ready to go. You'll be redirected to our support page where you can download the extension and you can install everything without speaking to anybody and you can go ahead and get set up within the space of about 10 minutes. Let me know what you think, leave a comment on the video and please remember to like my videos and subscribe. Thanks a lot.